and welcome back to what is almost the last video of 2019 and it's the much requested best launches of 2019. Mainly skincare, a little bit of makeup, a little bit of fragrance at the end, but you know that if I'm going to talk about something, it has to be significant, disruptive, interesting, one to watch, keep your eye on, well worth spending your money on because that's what I'm all about. Um, I'm going to start with the hyaluronic acid launches of 2019 and you know I'm going to start with Hada Labo. Um, I know I work with them on the launch. <laughs> Trust me, that was one video. Now I'm mentioning it because I use it pretty much every day. Hada Labo is Japan's number one multi-molecular hyaluronic acid range and every day I use the lotion number one and also I'm obsessed with the cleanser but genuinely there is not a product in that range that I wouldn't recommend to somebody somewhere with a certain skin type or a certain concern. It's just a really great multi-molecular, reasonably priced hyaluronic acid range. The only problem with it is it's currently only available on the Amazon site and it often runs out. Uh, come on Hada Labo, get your distribution act together and come to somewhere like Boots or Superdrug. That's 16 pounds, so it would sit on a high street shelf easily. However, uh, later in 20, that was sort of the beginning of 2019, sort of spring 2019, although I remember trying to mention it and it's selling out and then couldn't mention it again for ages because it's not fair for me to mention products. They have a real stock issue problem, um, which is why so many of you are still buying the Japanese one. And also the English language one is by no means exhaustive in its collection. There are still so many more Japanese language products within that range, but it's a great range. I highly recommend it to everybody. However, towards the end of 2019, we also got Curel, and the reason that Curel is important is because it is Japan's number one range for sensitive and dry skins. It's hyaluronic acid based. I really like it. However, I have to be careful with what I use because it is not too rich for my skin. That's the wrong way to describe it. And trust me, I'm only using the lotions and the milks, but it tends to make me glow too much and my makeup tends to slide off too much. So it basically saturates my skin and then sits on the top of my skin. But if you've got dry and sensitive skin, step on up to Curel. It's available at Boots, you see? Owned by Cow, who also owned John, John Frieda, they get distribution in the UK. The Moisture Facial Lotion Essence is a richer version of this. So it's hyaluronic acid based, really nice. It's the one that Trini tried and really liked. Um, it'll give you much more of a glow than this. This is a typical dry, put a lotion on top. With that one, you might not even need a lotion on top, but if you do, you would then put the Curel Milk over the top. And that is the Curel Moisture Facial Milk. That is more than enough for my skin. And there are a whole host of creams in this range too. So look out for those, they're really lovely. So that would be the equivalent of Hada Labo Lotion Number One. That would be the equi equivalent of Indeed Labs Hydration Booster. However, together they are richer. So good for dry skins and good at this time of year. Oh, an unsung hero with the range, the Curel Makeup Cleansing Gel. This is a clear gel that turns to milk, doesn't foam at all. They have a foaming cleanser. You know, I'm not a fan of foaming cleansers. This is Team that with the microfiber cloth will get rid of everything. My current favorite cleanser, I really love it. Strikingly similar to the peach and lily cleansing gel that I really like as well. It's like a melting, you say a gel and you think kind of like hair gel and alcohol based, but this isn't, it sort of melts into a milk. Really great products, hitting the high street and Amazon. Uh, cannot say enough good things about both those ranges, I really can't. Uh, let's be honest here, uh, The Ordinary started the skincare revolution and obviously this year it's gone quiet because uh, we lost its founder, Brandon, this year. However, they did supersize NMF and that's always a good thing, right? So that is still um, within travel size. It's such a great moisturiser. I absolutely love it. Flawlessly formulated. It basically is NMF named after your natural moisturizing factors. They are the key chemicals within your skin that hold and bind water into your skin. So in here you will find ceramides, urea, hyaluronic acid, all the amino acids that your skin actually needs and produces naturally. Here they are. No, you know, I love that people always go, no nasties, no fakes. Well, that's what I would call most of the products put out in most of the natural skincare ranges. This is genuinely as natural to your skin's barrier function 
as you're going to get. It replaces everything that you lose as your skin gets drier and tighter in winter or as you get older. I really like it. Let's talk about active ingredients this year because I uh, predicted at the end of last year that polyhydroxy acids would be big and they are, and they were. Um, Elizabeth Arden created an amazing polyhydroxy acid set of peels, super high-end, but super luxurious if you have the cash. However, uh, the Inky List, as usual, managed to find and jump on the next big trend and make it available to everybody. Neostrata um, were the first company really to use polyhydroxy acids. They're completely man-made and much more gentle and broad spectrum, and by that, they, they work across different molecular um, weights and different depths within the skin. So it would be the equivalent of having a mandelic um, and a lactic acid together, for example. Much more gentle on the skin, much less irritation, totally man-made, very interesting acids to use. And that is but without a doubt the best high street version. I'm gonna come back to the inky list a lot here because I do feel that they have managed to, <sighs> Based, not even dupe, because they don't dupe and they're not white label, but they have managed to keep their nose to the grindstone, bring it down in price and available to everybody on the high street. And they went into Boots this year, so for me that's exciting. They're also available in Sephora in the States, if you're watching this in, in the States and online. Uh, now, talking of which, uh, so if uh, polyhydroxy acids were the hot new ingredient for the end of 18, 19, then tranexamic acid is going to be the hot new ingredient for the end of 2019, going into 2020 and then it's decade. I've talked about tranexamic uh, acid when I was talking about um, discoloration defense from SkinCeuticals, which is this one here. Um, they were the first company to launch it pretty much widely available within the UK, has been available in a few sort of key cult products before. Tranexamic acid is not a resurfacing acid. It's an ingredient that, in fact, it's a drug that you can take orally that affects the clotting factors within the blood and the body so that it's often given, for example, postpartum after you've given birth or if you've got very heavy periods or you've got fibroids or something like that, has a tendency to shrink capillaries and make the blood clot more and they found out that by applying it topically to the skin, it has an effect on redness and pigmentation within the skin. So this is SkinCeuticals Discoloration Defense, the first high street, high end product to contain it. Uh, it actually has a higher level in the States than it does within the EU. Now, bearing in mind Brexit is happening in the UK, it'll be very interesting to see if we stay within the EU regulations or go to the US regulations for certain active ingredients. Um, so if you're in the States, you will get a higher level of the active ingredient than you will in the UK. But either way, if you've got the money, you know I love SkinCeuticals. It's beautifully formulated, lovely, lightweight, easy to use, feels like a hyaluronic acid, feels like HA intensifier, super easy and lightweight to use. Uh, the results are very, very, very impressive on this. However, guess what? The Inky List then found uh, that tranexamic was going to be a big ingredient and then they've got it here. Again, this is formulated for the UK EU market. So um, it's got tranexamic acid and I think it's 2% tranexamic acid. It has a 2% um, acai berry extract, which is very similar to vitamin C within the skin and 2% vitamin C in that as well. Really reasonably priced. Uh, the SkinCeuticals one has something called Heapies in, which is um, uh, it's actually owned by the L'Oreal Group and it's like a hyaluronic acid. It rebuilds the barrier function within the skin. Uh, there you go, the inky list, yet again, knocking the ball out of the park. Uh, other things that they've done this year that are utterly and completely unique is they launched something that, to be honest, I haven't tried because I don't really get pigmented, scarred blemishes. And this is the Inculus C50 Blemish Night Treatment, which has a, four, a stabilized form of vitamin C in it and salicylic acid. So you put it on your spots, either as they're drying up, or maybe if you've picked your skin, or if you've got that sort of purple red scar after you've picked your skin, the feedback from my followers, from you guys, has been amazing. You really love this product for post-blemish uh, uh, hyperpigmentation, hyperinflammatory pigmentation. As far as I know, there's nothing else like it on the market. Move all that to one side. Finally, uh, probiotics and the skin's microbiome has continued to be really big news uh, within 2019 and within the EU and US. And I predict 
it's going nowhere. The research is showing it's increasingly important for sensitive skin conditions like eczema and dermatitis, but also for psoriasis and also acne. Now, uh, not surprisingly, I mentioned this before and I am really loving this. This is Skin Gradients, which launched in Ireland, in Dublin um, this year. They're coming, Jennifer promises me, Jennifer Rock promises me that they're coming to the UK and then hopefully even the US uh, in 2020. This is the prebiotic probiotic cleanser and I really like it. It's a milky, creamy rinse off cleanser, the type I really love, uh, loaded with prebiotic ferments. And to show you that you always know when it hits the really big established skincare companies, you know that it's big business. Well, the iconic best-selling uh, Lancome Genifique serum has added prebiotic and probiotic extracts to it. And by that, I mean the prebiotics are the, um, the food that actually feed the healthy bacteria on your skin, the microbiome on your skin, and the probiotic ferments, in case you didn't know this, are pieces of the dead probiotics that your skin recognizes, because obviously you can't put a lot, a probiotic is a live bacteria. You cannot by law sell something that has live bacteria in it because it would be, well, you'd open it up and it would maybe have fungal and spores or, you know, it would be like a sort of Alexander Fleming experiment. So then you can have prebiotics, which feed the healthy microbiome of the skin. And then you can have probiotic ferments, which are essentially broken down bits of the microbiome. And what happens is your skin, as your gut does, so clever, they're beginning to realize it recognizes the broken pieces of the probiotics and says, oh, why did that? particular strain that's healthy to this skin dye, we need to produce more of it. In the same way, actually, that peptides work. If you think a peptide is a piece of a broken piece, broken down piece of your skin cell, it could be a piece of collagen, it could be a piece of elastin, your skin recognizes that and says, oh, why is that cell broken? Why is that only part of it? We need to produce more of that because something has happened. If they call it um, a wound recognition factor. So it basically looks at, when you put a peptide on your skin, your skin thinks it's damaged and it repairs it. Well, that's how probiotic extracts and ferments work. However, trust me, I am not the expert. The research around this field is amazing. Anyway, so Genifique, uh, you've now got a new advanced Genifique that has prebiotic, pro probiotic extracts and ferments in it. That is skincare. Hyaluronic acid, huge, supersized ordinary. Let's hope the ordinary gets back on track this year and produces more products. Tranexamic acid, probiotics. Um, I suspect that vitamin C is going to be huge in the new year. No bigger for all over the face, but trust me, eye products are going to be massive in the new year. Uh, Dermalogica have a Biolumin Vitamin C Eye Serum. Uh, guess what? The Inky List have Brighton Eye uh, eye Serum, which I'm loving at the moment, which is the one I mentioned with Trini with the cooling metal applicator. Vitamin C is really difficult to use on your skin at high levels, unless you go to a company like SkinCeuticals, because it's it's if you look at the inky list ones um, and the ordinary list ones, they can tend to be a bit tingly or a bit gritty or a bit serum-y and a bit silicony and they tend to roll off. So they're better used at night for lightening and brightening your skin. However, around the eye, they're an absolute no-no. If you put them anywhere within here, the ocular bone, you'll, you'll feel it start to tingle like crazy because this area is so fine and sensitive. Trust me, companies are working super hard to allow vitamin C to be delivered right up around the eye area and onto the lid. And the reason they want to do that is A, it's an antioxidant, B, it produces production of collagen, and C, they're trying to target this pigmentation in here, which I can point to with impunity because even through my NARS concealer, you can see it because I've got a shallow area here. Either way, you wanna put vitamin C around your eyes, Let's find a way to deliver it safely, securely, and nicely and pleasantly to use. And that's what will come in 2020, trust me. Other things that happened this year. Well, for me, obviously, and if you're under 40, feel free to fast forward this because you don't have estrogen deficient skin. But if you feel you're either perimenopausal or you definitely are menopausal, then you'll know that the lack of estrogen in your skin is major. Estrogen is the most important hormone really within your skin. It um, controls production of collagen and elastin, pigmentation, uh, hydration, 
natural mar natural moisturizing factor, barrier function, all that stuff. Well, for years and years and years, skincare companies have been dabbling with sort of estrogen mimickers, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. In the same way that I feel about black cahoosh or soy extracts, I'm like, just give me the actual estrogen. Anyway, we've now found the closest active ingredient that we can put on our skin that is not estrogen because estrogen on your skin would obviously be in a prescription because it's a hormone. And it is called MEP and it is methyl estradiol propanoate. And it comes from a company called M and Pell. And I am testing this. Two products, uh, by the way, you've not only got the MEP, the methyl estradiol propanoate, you've also got, uh, oh, it's like a who's who of great active ingredients. Retinol, vitamin C, niacinamide, antioxidants, and peptides. Hallelujah. It's basically just two great formulated products. Two products because there's a serum you use during the day and then there's a cream at night. However, I have to tell you with all honesty, and I rarely say this, the serum is slightly sticky, smells like um, uh, any really rich retinol vitamin C product, totally unscented. It's a lightweight pump action serum. It smells like a C ferulic. Combination with between C ferulic and a classic retinol product. Uh, the serum, the serum alone is slightly too sticky for me. I need to put something on top. And actually, at the moment, I'm then layering the night cream on top, which is the one with the retinol in. Now, bearing in mind, I've got an SPF 50 on my face, so I'm fine. And I'm in the UK, and the we're in December, and we've just had the longest uh, night of the year. UV index is probably what one and a half, two, and I barely leave the house because I'm too busy creating content for you. So I'm fine to use retinol during the day. Together, they are a dream ticket. I'm really liking them. I promise you. Uh, the clinical trials are incredible. And when I say clinical trials, I mean clinical trials with punch biopsies, biopsies before and afters done by dermatologists. They're really impressive at 12 weeks. I'm going to continue with 20 weeks and I'm going to show you my befores and afters. So far, for the clinical data, I'm loving it. Relatively expensive, but bearing in mind you've got everything you could possibly need in here. You won't need, I mean, I would put a hyaluronic acid with it and I would put an SPF with it, but you don't need a retinol, you don't need a vitamin C, everything's in there. Ladies over 50, could this be the light at the end of the tunnel? I will report back, I promise. Two major launches this year uh, for makeup. We have Pat McGrath and I covered it on my IGTV. She had a pop-up store, well, and all the windows and Selfridges, it was incredible. Um, you know that Jo loves the lipsticks, you know that she loves the eyeshadows. Well, for me, the launch of this year was Skin Fetish. A lot of people have asked me, I wrote about it in the Saturday Times, and a lot of people have asked me um, if it would replace my It Cosmetics CC cream. And the truth of the matter is, I use it for filming and I love it. It's very velvety and very powdery, very 90s finish, which a lot of people don't like. It doesn't really give them the glow that they want. So I would use It Cosmetics CC cream in real life and this for high days, holidays and filming. I love that matte velvety finish. The secret to using it and blending it is put it straight on top of your skin damp, skincare loaded face because it takes quite a lot of buffing in. And a lot of people might want to then put some sort of lotion on the top to lift it. I mean, I think Pat's been very clever with it. I think it is, um, it's long lasting. It gets better during the day. The more your skin sits in it and it blends with your skin's natural moisturizing factors and sebum and the warmth of your skin. Honestly, by the end of the day, you will not want to take your makeup off. It's impressive. Bearing in mind for a lot of people, it's going to be slightly too powdery. Me, I love powdery. Victoria Beckham launched this year, and for me it's Marmite, it really is. I know that Jo loves it, and I know a lot of influencers love it. It's, it's really expensive, and there's really nothing there that you can't get anywhere else. I do love the tiny little compacts, I love them. They're small, they're beautiful, they're elegant, I wish they were refillable. The most recent thing she's launched is a series of lip products. They're just lip liners, and then a weird kind of color lip oil. For me, it's really disappointing. I hate to say that. Um, the best products are the eye palettes without a doubt. And I do think they're beautiful. They're the most beautifully designed products of the year. I love the colors in them. They, they should have been refillable. And the only reason I say that, and I don't jump on Pat McGrath for being refillable is because Pat McGrath isn't saying that she's clean. If you say you're clean, you're you gotta do something, right? Your packaging is 100% refillable or it will be refillable or recyclable. 
if you're gonna go clean, you, you kinda gotta go for it. You can't just use it as a marketing moniker. It drives me mad. The final thing to be excited about this year was fragrance was finally democratized. And I'm going to show you something that I'm really, really loving. This is the collector set from Zara, and it's the Jo Malone set from Zara. Um, jo Malone obviously left her eponymous brand in 2006 and now creates a range under the moniker Jo Loves. These are so gorgeous. I mean, not only are they uber chic, I mean, uber chic. Jo was actually saying, um, in our roundup of best products, Jo was saying that she would be proud to get these. And I said, well, that's interesting because you don't shop in Zara. She went, no, I don't really shop in Zara, but look how chic they are. And she's right, she's absolutely right. I mean, you wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't a diffusion line from Chanel. So chic, so beautiful. There is not a duff fragrance amongst them. They're an edit of eight fragrances. And my favorites are, I mean, I love a patchouli. So Fleur de Patchouli is stunning. Now, bearing in mind, for me, Jo tends to err on the side of lighter weight, easier to wear, easy breezy. She doesn't really go hard and heavy, which is why Jo loves them. You're not really gonna find a room rocket in here. You're gonna be able to give them to anybody. Let's have a look, Bohemian Bluebells. You know who's gonna love that? Kate Moss, she loves a Bluebell fragrance. She used to wear the Penhaligon's fragrance, uh, Bluebells. Uh, Fleur d'Oranger is a really lovely citrusy white flower fragrance, so typically Jo Malone. It's like she's used all her contacts within the fragrance industry to bring the price down, find the best active ingredients, the best notes, the best fragrances, but at a price we can all afford. Water Lily Tea Dress is pretty and really lovely. A Malfi Sunray is just <sighs> holidays in a bottle. It smells like Capri when you first land in Capri or somewhere in the southern Italian sort of holiday belt. It's beautiful. My favourite one obviously is Ebony Wood. Oh, it's got a sexy undertow that has. Oh, oh, that's like your best crush at university in the library. Oh, Unisex, beautiful, gorgeous. The vetiver pompon mousse is absolutely beautiful. So what you have is you have vetiver and grapefruit. I mean, she's just clever. That is stunning citrus, a stunning citrus. And then tuberose noir, which is the closest you've got to a room rocker, but which I still absolutely adore. There is not a duff one amongst them. Joe Malone. Perfect, absolutely flawless. Zara, absolutely flawless. Do you wanna do it for skincare now? That to me is without a doubt the most exciting fragrance launch of the decade. There you go, I've said it. It's essentially like Les Exclusives for all of us. The Chanel Les Exclusives for all of us. Seriously, get down to Zara, find them, Beg, borrow, steal, don't quite steal them. They are amazing and so reasonably priced. Congratulations to Zara and Jo Malone for the fragrance launch of 2019. If they'd have just done it on January the 1st, it would have been the fragrance launch of the new decade. They are my best buys of 2019. I'm so excited. Things are just getting better and better in beauty and at a more uh, reasonable, inclusive, we can all afford price. Who doesn't want that? Happy New Year. Here's looking forward to a whole new decade of great beauty buys. <laughs>